Some of you might wonder why I named this, why I titled these videos Africa at the Crossroads. It's because Africa is everyone is on their path either from the north, south, east, west to this one location um, hypothetically where they're going to even meet in war in the the big war not just economically right now we are in that big economic war we're in it and people because it's an economic war they see the people dying in in uh, Ukraine and people dying in Israel and this is where people are being shot <coughs> military weapons but they're not seeing the <coughs> pardon me they're not seeing the people who are dying from lack of food lack of medicines don't have water only when the newspapers tell you about the Africans dying trying to cross the Mediterranean do you see it but it's continuing to happen you're not hearing about the people who are dying in France every day killed by far right when I say the people the Africans or the people from what you call in the Middle East that are dying in Europe as a result of being killed by Europeans now it blew up in England the other day and it was in the news but it's happening all over Europe and you are not seeing it in front of your face or in the news or you don't consider it to be a war and people dying and then there's people in the US from the America everybody jumps on Bill Gates case but there are more than him there's more than him some of them are black but they're in Africa with the same agenda so Africa is on the same road as everybody else trying to get out of poverty but being pushed into the war they're being pushed along this with everybody else they have to make a choice but you got people in the West who are telling Africans you don't have to um, go with this person, you know, don't let Russia in. You can pretend that you talk to Russia while we in, when you talk to us in the West and, you know, we can work it out. That's the way it's been for how many years now? Since uh, 14... Uh, 1487 I think it was 1480 anyway when this the war between Europe and the Muslims where they got defeated in Spain anyway it's been like that since the Portuguese came to Africa picked up People who have fled Portugal and Spain and took them as trophies. To begin the first the, to, to begin what became that what we know of today as the African slave trade. But Africa 
is on that path. And the leaders think that they can straddle the fence, you know. You got this fence with Russia and China and the BRICS nation, the, big, the people who are joining together in what is called BRICS. And then you have the so-called G7. But it's really a G1 with six. The other, the other six nations are pretty much just there at the behest of the, it's like a friend coming with the, in black America they call it the entourage. The popular black singers and performers have their entourage. You know, they all feeding off of that one guy. And that's the case of America. Where they're all feeding off of America and hoping that America can continue the path that is on so that they don't lose the status that they have standing beside America. That's the way it is. And that Africa is like <laughs> this ship between these two big ships being pushed along now. <laughs> That's the... Anyway, Africa is at that crossroads where the leaders, the current leaders they have, can't decide. And I've shown you the instances of where Africa, the leadership is like dead weight. Instead of having a seal, they have no mast and no rudder. So wherever the tide that America turns, <laughs> that tide pushes them. Wherever the tide that Russia and China turns, that tide pushes them. The young people of Kenya the other day Somebody stirred them up. Young people of Nigeria, somebody stirred them up. But you can't get the, the young people of South Africa to stir up and get rid of the people who are taking Western Cape out of the land. They prefer to fight against Africans, other Africans. because of the leadership. But pretty soon, Africans have been faced with the hard choice now. Oh, I should say, well, they're already fa they're faced with the hard choice now. They're hoping that all this will die down and Africa will just float to the top because somebody tell them that 2063 is going to be their year. And all they're doing is saying, hey, let's keep on walking, you know, let's sing and dance, and by 2063, we're going to be there. <laughs> no, you're not. Because, like I said, that war in... People are talking about making peace in Ukraine. That's been going on for a year. But when I say going on for a year, the push by the Europeans themselves. After they see Germany that's destroyed, they say, oh, time to talk. So they are trying to get some things started but America is denying Zelensky and Zelensky is saying no I'll, I'll, every Ukrainian will die before I go to talk peace on the terms that I want I want to stay at head of Ukraine a rich billionaire from the money that I stole and live happily ever after. 
but when that war is finished or slows down because it's not gonna finish <laughs> the war in Europe never ends that's why the, the US pushed them into EU so that they'll stop killing each other. That's why the US maintains a force over there, military, to, to keep them from killing each other. But when the European, when the US can, can't stop them from killing each other, guess what's gonna happen? The Poles and the Estonians are ready. I mean, these guys. There's never been a time when there wasn't war in Europe. America is keeping the, the cover on the pot after World War II and formed NATO as a way of redirecting that anger against each other at somebody else. America will send them to fight. Whenever it starts getting the pressure to relieve that pressure, America will send them to fight somewhere. Right now, it was in Syria the last time. But now they're in Ukraine. But when they get beat in Ukraine and America is not there behind them, guess what's going to happen? All hell is in Europe. Anyway, that's why I named it Africa at the Crossroads because Africa is at the crossroads now and what's going on with the leadership is not helping. Anyway, looks like rain. Thanks for uh, stopping by. I hope you're listening carefully because like I said, the, you know, when, the, when you put water in a pot to turn on the heat, it doesn't seem like it's Put your finger inside there and it's not hot but when the water gets to a certain point it takes less time to boil it than it did to start it up when it gets hot not boiling it takes two minutes to do that but then half a minute to go from hot to boil and that's what's going to happen Prepare yourself. Peace.